first and foremost, I want to welcome our new Mystics players. And that was a great draft last night for Coach Tebow, Ms. Shakira, uh, Ms. Christina. Welcome to the to the monumental basketball family. We're excited about that. But I, I know we're here to talk about the Wizards. Uh, I really appreciate the season that just happened uh, to go through the fires and, and some of the things that we had to go through to come out on the other side with uh, the amount of optimism we have for the future, I think was was very worthy of, of going through it. Uh, certainly there's some things that you wish could have gone our way a little bit earlier, but uh, where we're at, where we're headed to, I'm very excited. So with that, I'll take some questions. We will start with Chase. Hey, Tommy. Um, just generally, I guess, how did this season go uh, for you comparative to expectations? Well, I think we had high expectations going into the season and everything kind of is dictated by staying healthy all year. And we weren't able to do that. And, and that's just something that you have to struggle with throughout the NBA. We're one of 30 teams. Everybody has the same narrative. Everybody says if we can stay healthy, then this could happen. And I feel like we we weren't able to do that. We, we had some tough injuries, but I, I still think the people that filled those voids invaluable playing time for certain players like Corey Kispert, Daniel Gafford. We made a pretty big substantial trade at deadline that brought us more talent, which is the really the bottom line part of my job is talent acquisition, get this team more talent in order to get better results. And so I, I look at this season, Chase, it, it's almost like into three or four parts. We had a great start. Uh, we, we took on some water. We hit some COVID situations. We lost some tough games. We had some injuries. We, we had a trade deadline different, you know, kind of a different direction for us. And then, you know, the result is here we are. And, and we're sitting kind of a bad taste in your mouth not to be in the playoffs. But I look at the way we finished some of the lineups we were able to look at. Uh, just gives me great, great encouragement for, for what's ahead. And one thing I can't say enough was the job that Wes and his staff did in their first year. You know, when you bring on a, a new head coach, uh, we both kind of, we had to smile about how, how far 18 inches really is in, in true life. When you slide down one seat and you become the head coach of an NBA team, totally different life. And I think he weathered the storm, had a lot of stuff thrown at him, uh, uh, you know, still managed to show he's a tremendous coach down the stretch of games, you know, tight games, look at our record. He did a great job with that. And, you know, I think you learn a lot after that first year, the best thing, we say about rookies, the best thing about rookies is that they get to get to their second year. I'd say the same thing about rookie head coaches, that you learn so much that first year that you can apply moving forward. What about the defense specifically? Uh, so much emphasis obviously was put on that end of the floor last offseason. Yeah. What do you needs to be fixed going into the summer? Well, most importantly, you got to have a consistent lineup out there every single night. You know, someone like yourself, I, I know you look at numbers a lot and, we're one of only five teams in the league who had two five-man lineups play more than uh, 75 minutes together. You know, we, we just we never were able to put the same group out on the floor, and that's difficult. That's a tough challenge for coaches, but nobody cares. You got to get your guys out on the floor. You got to defend. We know we have to defend at a much higher level, and I think the time that we'll be able to spend this summer will be absolutely point out player development, but certainly putting in a little bit more of a defensive mindset. Um, you know. Part of our issue defensively this year is, you know, like I said, availability, certainly. And we, we just wavered a little bit on, on some of the things that we did early. You know, we kind of got away from. And some of that's personnel driven. Some of that is you get in the dog days of the season. Uh, there's a lot of demand. If you're going to be a high, a high achieving defensive team, you have to have a mindset. You have to have a lot of players that are, that are wired that way. So we got to take a look at our roster, certainly. But I, I think. You know, with Wes's acumen, his coaching staff, player development, and time together this summer, I look forward to what we're going to come back to training camp with. And defense is absolutely going to be a focus, Chase. There's no excuse for the way we were other than we, we had a lot of injuries, had a lot of stuff happen that you just have to do stuff on the fly. And the results were kind of predictable when you're doing things on the fly. But, uh, again, that's something that I think we can control this summer, put in that foundation, and get a chance to come out next year and be a lot better. Ava? Hey, Tommy, um, just to ask you about another kind of off-season uh, need that you've spoken about in the past, but with all of the different point guards that you guys got to kind of play with this year, 
what did that teach you about the type of kind of floor general that works best with your core guys with KCP and Kuz, Porzingis and Brad, of course, and then how much is that um, complicated, if at all, by the fact that Brad and, and Porzingis weren't able to play together uh, yet? I, I think one of the easiest problems that I have to solve is, is worrying about talent playing with talent. That, that, that works itself out. I, I think Bradley and KP are going to be great in a two-man game. I think both of them are creative uh, with the ball. Both of them know how to score. Both of them have great court vision. And certainly Brad showed, you know, in the NBA anymore, Ms. Save, I think they may even try to change the position. It's called points guard, right? A lot of guards now, are, they're just looking to score first. And I, I'm traditional. I like point guards that really set the offense and really try to get everybody involved and move the ball because you see the results. You know, I think our record this year, 28 assists or more, you know, it was some, something like maybe 15 and five. You know, when we move the ball, we're pretty good. And the opportunity to look at a lot of point guards wasn't my intention this year. We thought we had starting out the season. This is the direction you're going to go. But life happens and you, and you pivot. And, and so when we brought back Ish, I knew what Ish could do for this roster, especially that second unit. We had Thomas. I know Thomas was going to be a, a real settling force and a pretty good defensive presence. But what's going to be tremendous for Chris Stapps to have a former teammate to play with, the familiarity there. And selfishly, I wanted to look at Thomas one more time. He didn't play very well this season, other places he was. And, and I, I think there was an opportunity for him to, to help himself and help us. And so that, that, that was a good uh, you know, relationship later in the season that we were able to do. And looking at all those people, I still see, I, I think we need somebody who's going to be a pass first point guard. I think we need to see somebody that'll be able to control, contain the dribble on the defensive end and, and help us keep people out of the paint. And that, those are some of the probably uh, prerequisites we're going to be looking for. You know, you have the draft, you have free agency, you have trades. You can claim people off waivers. There's certain ways you can build your roster. We're going to exhaust every avenue to, to help ourselves with that position. But I also know that, to me, you, you're going to have to have secondary playmakers now. And in teams, you know, I think really exciting teams, and we're pretty excited when Bradley was playing in the point next to some of the point guards that we had. When you have that secondary playmaker, and guys that can create off the dribble for themselves, for other people, not just having one, but having multiple people on the floor gives you a whole different dimension. And that's where, you know, I think Danny uh, showed some progress this year, being able to be one of those type of players. His usage went up, and so did the fear factor amongst the courtside ticket holders. You know, when the ball comes flying at him, sometimes he has some turnovers, but we'll live with that for his growth. I think Danny shows that. And, uh, you know, Bradley, he was averaging over six points or six assists a game. You know, so he wasn't a point guard by position, but by nature, he's a distributor as well. And I see that in Kyle. I see that with Chris Stapps. We have a lot of people who can get assists. So our point guard necessarily doesn't have to be somebody that, that's going to come and be a high profile name or a high profile performer. It just needs somebody to have, be a good fit. And you spoke a little bit about um, just Wes's season, but what struck you particularly about uh, how he kind of dealt with kind of the locker room adversity that a lot of players have have spoken about, just how he guided the team through that? You know, I, I think he's always going to be calm. He's a great listener. And we keep the path, uh, you know, focused forward at all times. And I'm, I'm probably not breaking news to you all here, but, you know, some things you hear about, some things you don't hear about, that's every locker room in the NBA. Some things play itself out on national TV and timeouts. Some things happen that they get out later after the fact. But no matter what, what we like to do when you have issues is solve them and keep moving forward. And, and you know, you cannot live in the past. You have to learn from it and move forward. And, and that's something I think, Wes, you know, we preach every day, just get better. Let's win today. Let's, let's keep moving forward. And he did a great job with that. And, and I'm really proud. To, to work with Wes and his staff. I think they really have tremendous potential for the future. This, this year, now I'm not saying it was the third ring of hell, but it was close for some of the things that he had to face for, as a first time head coach, but so did 29 other teams. You know, and, and the, the NBA don't care. The schedule keeps coming, the games keep coming, you gotta go play. So you learn, you definitely get the scars and scars propel you forward. Thanks, Tommy. You're welcome. Josh. Tommy, how do you evaluate your team's salary cap flexibility heading into this summer and uh, even projecting a little bit beyond that? 
you know, it, it's funny, Josh, we used to have in increments of four year plans financially, and then it gets sorted to three. And you, you look at everything to try to get your team better today, and certainly with an eye towards the future. You know, I, the Wizards have had uh, cap space, what, twice in 20 years. It's not a cap space place. We've always been able to retain our free agents. Uh, you know, you look at some of the high profile free agents that, that Washington's had in the past. We kept the ones that we wanted to keep, certainly. And I think being able to be nimble contract wise is very important. And I, I like we have very clean contracts. I think we have opportunities to get better through the roster building that we've done through the draft. Certainly we've made some trades. We've done some things in free agency, but, you know, my, my value for the for the cap is always going to be what makes the Wizards the best. You know, we've had the great support of, of Mr. Leonsis and, and all of his partners and, and the decisions that we make. And he's been very supportive of our vision for the future. And it, it doesn't involve trying to, to slash money and get way, way under anytime soon. And, you know, we're not trying to sacrifice the future with picks and trading and doing all this stuff either. We, we have an opportunity with our cap space, you know, down the road, maybe that's something we'll look at. But this year where we were able to create a deadline, we, we actually saved some money. We acquired draft capital and we think we acquired a fantastic solution uh, in, in Porzingis at both ends of the court. Uh, you know, I think we're in a good place. You uh, just asked, answered a question about Wes. I was wondering if you could uh, maybe uh, if I can get a little bit more specific there, what, what did you feel like was Wes's uh, most nimble response or best response to the adversity you faced in terms of maybe a specific instance or, or series of instances? I, you know, the, there's so many moments that happen during a season, snapshots or whatnot that, that you that burn into your memory. And I, I think he handled success the same way we handled adversity, just straightforward keep moving, be very calm. He's a meticulous person. He's actually very funny uh, and, and has a great ability with players to connect. I think it's something as you learn, as you go, that maybe I should do less film and more time down in the coffee shop, more time touching players as you go forward. Um, I, I think those are things that he learned and, and I watch as the season unfolds uh, that he, he noticed that intuitively, you know, to really get to somebody's core, you, you got to spend time. And I think that's something that uh, resonated with me, how he spends time with, you know, one through 15, 15 like one. And that's when you know you have a fantastic coach. He treats everybody the same. I think it's, 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 um, it's a remarkable ability to relate to people that Wes has. I think it's only going to get better as you move forward. And I, I think there's – you don't have to have long – super long conversations. We just went through exit interviews, you know, we used to budget an hour for every player and stuff. And in this day of 140 characters, you're lucky you get two, three minutes with a real valuable time, right? But we really shorten the time that you have somebody or really get to the meat of what it is that, what, what, where do they feel they could get better? How can we help them? How can we get better as an organization? And their input is very valuable. Their insight, you know, and you try to put all that stuff together and see places that we have holes, places that we do very well. And, and let's put all that together. Just my exit interviews with the players, everybody's very complimentary of West's knowledge of the game, his ability to convey a thought. You know, I think everybody wants more practice time to be able to get better to the defensive end or, or Chase is going to be blowing us up next year this time. I think we, we, we really uh, saw West's growth as a head coach with the time that uh, when you're on the road, you know, and some of the tough losses that you have, the ability to, to get the troops back up, get everybody focused on the next game. We had some tough losses. We followed up with big wins. And, and that was pretty special to see. Thank you. Matt Paris. Hey, Tommy, you kind of uh, referenced it earlier. With, uh, hey, Matt, I'm sorry to be rude, but I can't hear you. Oh. Hey, how about now? Is that better? A little bit better. Okay. My headphones are not good. Um, you can shout, man. I get yelled at all the time. Go ahead. So what do you think your biggest challenge is this off season and just kind of the, how pivotal is this off season for you guys as a franchise? I believe you're asking me what is our biggest challenge challenge in the off season. Thank you. Um, you know, just to be patient, you know, you can, you can put yourself, there's going to be a buyer frenzy once you get towards the, the, the draft. There's going to be a lot of teams because there's so much 
there's so little money this summer in the, in the marketplace for free agents. There's going to be a lot of teams that want to shuffle. There's going to be some teams that will do a little bit on the side, and there's going to be some teams that are going to be do complete restructuring. And to really know ahead of time what, we're, what our needs are going to be, where we can fill those needs, and then being patient to get the best possible deal. You know, that's not a challenge like I'm worried about. Those are something we embrace. You know, I've been – this is my third season as the GM. We've made a lot of changes. We looked at a lot of players, and I feel like that's my responsibility to, to really keep moving on on talent and try to just continue to acquire more talent. And it's a cold-blooded business sometimes. I hate that because I love players. I'm a big fan. You bring these people here, they're part of your basketball family. But at the end of the day, my job is to do the very best for the Washington Wizards. And that means sometimes you're gonna have to make some difficult decisions. And so, you know, I'm not afraid to make big changes. I'm not afraid to, for big swings. That's because I have a great support staff with me. All the people that put input into our decisions. And I think we've come up with some pretty good solutions. We gotta do better. We're gonna keep moving forward and there's gonna be more change as we try to get better and better. But those aren't challenges that I look at that, that make you panic. I don't, and I've been doing this three years. We don't panic. We just got to keep moving and be methodical about what we do. I appreciate all the free advice that I hear, but I can't really listen to it versus what we know intuitively to do. Do you think big changes are necessary after missing the play in and the playoff this year? Or how do you well, I think when you miss the playoffs, there's always changes that, that need to be made. If it's get better talent or be a little bit more patient, sometimes it's just the, the way what we do. Day to day, maybe there's some tweaks we can do, but certainly you always want to get better. I don't think you can ever stay the same, Matt. Thank you. Dave. Hey, Tommy, we, we kind of talked about this, but uh, you know so much about every player when you bring them here, you assemble uh, a team. But uh, what did you learn about certain players? Was anything stick out where you say, wow, I didn't know so and so was like that off the court? Or I didn't know he could do that or do that that well. Are there, are there uh, things that you can share that, that were kind of aha moments? You know, when we acquired Chris Stapps, you, you know a player from afar. I knew Chris Stapps when he was a young man in Sevilla. He was the same height, but he only weighed about 180 pounds back then. Uh, to see him now fast forward at 26, he, he's really a funny guy, but he's a very good leader. And he's uh, probably more skilled than anybody in the league gives him talent for and, and I'm excited about that. That's a big aha moment for us to see him, you know, the 17 straight, you know, we, we, we held him out of one game, but he's, when he's healthy, he's out there. He's a big impact player at both ends, uh, better shot blocker than, than we thought. I think getting Kyle Kuzma, getting Pope, you know, those, those guys weren't with us a year ago and they both started and they were both tremendous and their playoff experience that they brought uh, you know, when they shed that wisdom on to everybody else, I think it was really empowering. And they're great co-pilots with some of the, uh, you know, the leaders that we have of this team. I consider those guys now to be leaders. A lot, big aha moment for us. You know, we were sizing Co Corey Kispert up for go-go jerseys in camp and wondering if we could get him minutes this year. And then he ends up starting for us and doing it, did, did a hell of a job. You know, set some rookie records here. Uh, I think he's got a great future. I think he's more than just a three-point shooter and a floor spacer, and, and that's our challenge to him is to come back better. And you know, just with those guys right there was pretty special. You know, getting Rui back and watching him uh, expand his game, and now he's a three-point threat, I, I think that was a big aha moment. You know, watching Denny's development with the ball, being a, taking the challenge every night of guarding the other teams, you know, some of the better offensive players in the league, Denny had to guard and he had to figure it out. And he's going to continue to get better, but – Sometimes the only way you get better is you, you got to look at the film and, you know, box scores and die, but video convicts, you know, he, he, you, you see Denny and he gives refs a lot of advice every night. And I think the more he watches himself, he sees, hey, these refs actually were probably right. That probably was a foul. So he's got to learn that. But aha moment for us was watching him take those challenges on. My big aha moment actually yesterday, Denny actually does some, does some rapping on the side. He calls himself the big dreidel. So that was a big, big aha moment for me, Dave. Neil. Hey, Tommy, good afternoon. Um, last we heard from Brad, he was hoping to get the screws out of his wrist um, maybe in a weekish time. I guess, has there been any change to that? And is the plan for him to just continue rehabbing, you know, with the monumental basketball medical team? 
Yeah, certainly. It's uh, it's later this month. I think it's like the 19th, 20th. I don't have my calendar in front of me, but that's when rehab begins. You know, he's been able to strengthen the other parts of his body, but that wrist he, he's not able to do anything with. So the first thing when a cast comes off is you got to you start from ground zero. And fortunately, it's his left hand. Fortunately, it's 100 percent healthy. The pins pop out and life begins. And one thing I've been I've marveled at been with Bradley since day one. Watched him go through a lot of different injuries and come back and time and time again, he knows his body better than anybody. And he's one of the fastest healers I've ever been around. You know, this, this season, if you look across the league, I think the top 25 players have played in less than 75% of their games. You know, a lot of this stuff's predictable, folks. We, we went through three seasons crammed into 18 months. There's going to be injuries. There's going to be overuse. There's going to be exhaustion, all those things. But we're still able and blessed to be in the NBA to play these games. That injury with Bradley stunk. You know, he got run over, took a charge. That's why I told him it's what you get for playing defense. He took a charge in Memphis. That 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 ligament was gone. And, you know, we were hoping, hoping somehow he could play, but by trade deadline, we knew it was highly unlikely he was going to have surgery. We had to move forward. That made that trade a lot easier, certainly at trade deadline. But you know, again, you got to always monitor the marketplace and being able to acquire talent. That that talent that we acquired next season will pay dividends playing with Bradley. I would have rather had Bradley healthy all season long. And then certainly, you know, you're talking about a guy who's led the league in scoring pretty much all of last year, was all NBA last year. You come in, you get injured. Well, in the NBA, that minimizes you. You know, in the NBA, you almost don't exist once you're hurt. You know, I see stuff about Bradley, and I, I kind of wonder, my goodness, are we talking about the same player? You know, he's a special player, one of the best in his position in the NBA. I was with Team USA last summer in Las Vegas when he was playing for them. And, you know, I, I sat with, Craig, uh, with uh, Coach Pop at dinner. He just couldn't rave enough about the leader that Bradley was, how selfless he was, and all the things that he was about and how important he was going to be to that team. And COVID knocked him off that team, but that didn't change. The stuff that, you know, Pop listed is stuff that I knew about Bradley, and I know he'll do that again for us in the future. Sat with him yesterday, exit interview-wise. He's really excited about the opportunity here in D.C. to get better and what we've done, and, and you know, the future's there. You know, it's his decision in July, but I feel comfortable that this is a place for him. And I think he's excited about being back here. That surgery is behind us. The rehab's in front of us and he'll be here. You know, he and his wife have another baby. That's a fantastic thing. And um, I, I really think this summer for him is, is a bit of about, uh, you know, it's not a revenge tour or anything like that, but I think he wants to reassert, hey, I'm one of the top players in the league. And the only way you do that is come back, results, put up wins. And I think that's something that challenges he's relishing. And for Kyle, I believe he might be uh, extension eligible at some point during this offseason. I guess, is that something that you guys uh, are curious and engaging with him on? Um, you know, I, we leave that for free agency in, in, in July. And it certainly is. There's a couple of people extension eligible. We'll look at everything, what's best for the Wizards, what's best. If there's a good deal with any of these guys, you know, I think we look at it. But Kyle, is, uh, he was a tremendous talent. You know, I, I don't consider him injury prone. You know, 16 games this year, I think that's starting to be kind of more normal in the NBA when you get below the 70 games that used to be, hey, it's a lot of injuries. But I, I think Kyle's a durable player. I think he's a tremendous talent at both ends of the floor. He's a good leader and uh, certainly somebody we look forward to having back next season and beyond. But, you know, a lot of those things just take care of themselves uh, as we get into free agency and, and getting into – past the draft, past free agency and what's best. You know, we, we extended Gaff at the beginning of this season, you know, as we, as the season was starting. So there's not a there's not a shot clock on that. We'll just look and see what's best for the Wizards, what's best for for the, those players. And I, his agent or something. Hey, well, if he's going to give me a piece, we'll we'll uh, work that out. Um, and I understand that this decision might be still far in the future. Not sure when the next time we'll get a chance to chat with you. Um, for Denny, do you think that there's any chance that he would play summer league or because of his, you know, Euro basket, you know, kind of obligations? Is that kind of yeah. not feasible? If you, you follow the Wizards, you know I'm a very big supporter of players playing for their national team. He actually has to do a World Cup qualifying segment this summer and for Euro basket with Israel. And I think FIBA games, especially World Cup, especially Euro, Euro basket, the level of competition in those games, the amount of uh, fanfare, everything, that, that those are high-level games. And I believe he'll get more out of that. 
uh, and, and being a, one of the key players for Israel will, will give him the kind of experience, the kind of pressure we want him to have that probably summer league doesn't exist there. We have other people we want to look at for summer league. I think Danny will be tremendous in, in those competitions. Uh, and, and I know his, his coach, his staff with the Israeli team will have great connection with those guys. I look forward to working with them. Um, you know, I, I'm really excited for his opportunity to be in those competitions. Wayne. Thanks, Tommy. Hey, Tommy, how you doing? Uh, my first question for you is, when you look at your roster now and for the future, what identity are you hoping to build here uh, with the Wizards? Well, certainly we want to continue to build on. We're an exciting team. We're an up-tempo team. We're a team that, you know, we can score. But we, I would add to that that we have a defensive mindset, and that's something that doesn't exist right now because if it did, we wouldn't be talking about how we have to get better. But everybody can get better, and I think defensive mindset, that's something that Wes, his staff, I, I know that's a big – of area of focus for them moving forward. It's something they're comfortable with. And, and you know, I think there's really some, some pretty good opportunities to get better just by time equity, just by repetition. So, you know, our identity, you know, prior to this season coming in is a lot different at the end of the season. So I hesitate to give you what we're going to look like next year without the draft, without free agency, without trade season, everything else. So maybe we can revisit this in October. And lastly, uh, what were some, some positives from the team that stood out to you this year that you would hope uh, you can just build off the next? Yeah, I think besides all the things that I've already said, I, I think just the spirit of this team, especially at the end of the year, how much that group came together, supported each other. You know, we had some guys, you know, Rui missed a big chunk of time. Thomas Bryan missed a big chunk of time. We got new players come in. We had players go out. We had COVID happen. We had injury happen. We had tough losses. And they all stuck together. And, and I think that's a sign of a... a we're getting closer to the, to the roster we envision where you have a great deal of versatility, a great deal of diversity in terms of experience in the NBA, experiences in life, and, and the ability for all those guys to come together to unite and, and go out and try to play games every night in the NBA, win games every night. I, I see that in this group. Zach? Hey, uh, Tommy, you touched on this earlier, but how impactful is Rui's development of the three-pointer uh, for him going forward and also for the team? Well, I did certainly to have another floor spacer, another three-point threat is, is tremendous for what we're trying to do. We need to shoot more threes next year. We need to make more threes next year. That's, that's something that's also a big emphasis this summer. Rui asserted himself in that area. I think we, uh, the things, you know, I can't worry about what we weren't able to do, but we were able to sneak some lineups out where we had Danny Rui and Kuz out there and their ability to switch and, and guard multiple positions was great. I'd seen Perzingis and Gafford play together for a small amount of time. It just gives you so many more options. But with Rui, I think he's a great blend player. I think his defense will be much improved next year. Uh, one thing I can really compliment him on is very, very seldom do you see somebody miss training camp, miss preseason, and come back and have a productive year. And one, especially once he kicked the, the, the minutes restriction and was able to play, especially as a starter, his, his numbers, you know, that's more in line with what we envisioned for him. And uh, that three-point line certainly became his friend and he embraced it. And I, I expect him to continue to be a three-point threat next season. That's only going to help the Wizards offense. Now we need him to work on his defense like everybody else. And I think he'll be an excellent two-way player who can play multiple positions. Thank you. You're on. Um, hi, Tommy. Uh, uh, on the subject of uh, Danny, uh, what did you see from his playmaking ability? If you can break it down a little bit, you know, pick and rolls, transition, and and how much do you think he'll be able to have the ball? Uh, you know, usage uh, as high as it was with, you know, all, all the players coming back? Well, that's going to be determined by him. He's going to have to come into training camp and carve out his role, carve out his minutes by production. You know, you're, this year, it's a work in progress. I was very impressed. He came up uh, still, you know, his left hand has more fingerprints on it than his right hand. He never uses his left. He's going to have to go left more. He's going to have to cut some turnovers down but as his usage went up, turnovers, that's natural. I, I give him a hard time because I know how good he can be. Uh, I think put him in DHOs, 
making him a, a, a secondary playmaker. I saw him bring the ball up this year and be able to, inst to initiate the offense. Those are things he wasn't doing a year ago. We know he's far more capable of more with that. But uh, you, you got to take it slow. But to tell him, hey, you got to come into camp and be ready to grab those minutes, I think it's a challenge to him uh, to, to be ready on day one to come in and be a more mature player in year three than you were in year two and be able to really accept your role. And, and he, a couple other players at our exit meetings, you know, my message to them was real simple. Just be great at the things you're good at. Don't try to work on things that we're not going to ask you to do. Really work on, you know, what your shot, where your shots are going to come from, you know, what, who we need you to defend. These are your responsibilities this summer. You know, be great at the things you're good at. And I think Danny took that on yesterday. Christos? Hello, Mr. Shepard. Thank you for your time, first of all. Uh, speaking about the second half of the season and the chemistry that the team have, what did you see about, about the team chemistry-wise? Well, like I mentioned earlier, I think at the end of the season, we saw, OK, this is going to be our team. And Bradley, even when he was injured, was with us on several trips, was at all our home games. I think those guys genuinely fool for each other. I think when you do go through adversity, you come out on the other side, you've got a chance to get even tighter. And I think that can only help us in the future. And speaking about the next season, the potential this team have, the foundation that you have from this season to next season, what, what is the priority for you during the off season? What would you like to add? What would, would you like to improve in this team? As I mentioned several times previous in this call, you know, we, we, we got to get better in the backcourt. We need some more talent acquisition. We'll, we'll plan to have an excellent draft and we'll see where it goes from there. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Case, did you have another question? Uh, yes. Uh, will Corey Kispert be playing in the summer league? You know, we're, we're looking at that. He'll definitely be in the camp, but I know what Corey can do. Uh, we have a lot of players we want to look at. We had, you know, Jordan Shackle, some of our go-go players, whoever we draft. Uh, we're going to look at a lot of people. And when we know what Corey can do, we can kind of safely set that to the side and look at more people. You know, I'm a big fan of summer league, don't get me wrong, but sometimes uh, there's opportunities to look at people that you wouldn't otherwise have. If we want to bring them to camp, we want to do two ways. We want to do exhibit tens. We want to give them a free agent contract. Those kinds of things present themselves in summer league. And I want to make sure we have plenty of roster spots and shots available for that. And it might dissuade some people coming here if they know Corey's going to be on a summer league team. They know they're not going to get a lot of looks. So, you know, I, 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 I trust the work that Corey puts in. I know where he's going to be. He's going to be with our people awful, an awful lot this summer. And uh, I, I have full confidence in him coming in training camp ready to go. And when it comes to Beal's decision, you brought it up earlier. Um, just the timeline of that, given how much it could affect the rest of your offseason, is it important to you to, to kind of know sooner than later so you can operate accordingly? Yeah, it is. But, you know, the way that the NBA calendar is set up, we can't do anything earlier than July 1. I can just go off a 10 years relationship with him, and I think he feels comfortable here. We certainly feel comfortable with him here. It's a good fit. So, can't do anything before July 1, that would be tampering, right? And that doesn't happen in the NBA. So I just wait and we'll, we'll get together and have those conversations at the right time. But I feel every indication he's given me that, that, that he wants to be here moving forward. And you know, I, I stick to the 10 years of confidence that I have in the relationship that we've had. It's a lot of time, a lot of equity, a lot of conversations. I, I feel we've shown that this is a place that, that we can build around him. And I think he has shown to the, to the community here when he's healthy, he's one of the best players at his position. So those are hard to come by. Thanks, Tommy. You're welcome. And I think that's it, Tommy. Thank you for your time. I, I really, before I jump off here, I just want to, it was a tough one for me yesterday, getting the news, um, lost a dear friend. We, we lost several people in the last few days. And I just want to say goodbye, say hello to, to, to Wayne Cooper's family. Mr. Wayne Cooper, one of the one of the two gentlemen in this business, dear friend, losing him that 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 was really a tough shot, and certainly losing Gene Shu, Tom Young, those are members of our basketball family. And Gene, Gene, he was a mentor to me, was a fantastic coach, obviously here in Philly, but just a wealth of talent. And Tom Young was just, you know, Tom Young, Gene Shu put Maryland basketball on the map, and those are two people I revere 
for their wisdom, what they were able to do with us. West coached with Tom, with, with Eddie Jordan. You know, Eddie took, uh, Tom took Eddie to the final floor at Rutgers. But uh, between Coop and those two guys, you know, it was just awful to think of the people we're losing. And obviously my sympathies, condolences to the Haskins family for their loss as well. It's been difficult, you know, and I just want to suggest to everybody, maybe call somebody you hadn't talked to in a long time, hug your loved ones. And, you know, let's try to, let's try to make sure people know we love them before we have to say goodbye and without a chance to say goodbye. So with that, I bid you adieu. Thank you for your coverage this year. You experienced a lot in your first year. So just what, it, how did you think it kind of went and what were some of the, the things that you, you take away from big picture? Well, you know, it's a different experience. Um, you know, we, we talked about it at length, kind of all season, the adjustment from being an assistant to a head coach um, and kind of retraining your thought, thought process, uh, you know, even the day to day, how you work um, becomes less and less about, um, you know, the opponent uh, and more centered around your team and specifically managing people. Um, and it's not just, you know, touching players every day, but, you know, all the other pieces, you know, whether it's the uh, strength conditioning, it's the equipment, it's the uh, your staff, uh, all of that, you know, all those guys and uh, all those individuals rather need uh, attention. Uh, the scheduling piece, uh, there are a lot of moving parts. So uh, it, it's an adjustment on uh, a number of levels. Uh, obviously, it's, it's something you get more comfortable with as you go, but uh, certainly an uh, unbelievable experience. And, you know, I know you, you pride yourself on defense, especially the fact that this team faced, uh, finished worse in defensive rating than it did the year ago, just – I guess, what do you make of that? And I know you had a lot of moving parts and that sort of stuff, but just, I guess, what do you take away from that? Well, I think it's sometimes, a, you know, a little misleading when you start looking at rankings alone. Sure. Um, you know, because the numbers are, are going to change. And yeah, they at times it's, you know, a, a matter of a percent that changes, you know, a couple of positions, you know, overall. I'm not going to speak on what happened defensively last year. It wasn't here, of course. Um, you know, I thought we started off, you know, pretty strong. And I thought, I thought that was a great start for us. Not only winning games, but we, we had to rely on our defense to do so. We struggled offensively to, uh, you know, uh, point differential. So, you know, we had to, that was our calling card. We had to guard to uh, uh, give ourselves a chance. You know, I thought we let go of that a little bit once we started to get an offensive rhythm. Um, but that's no excuse. You know, it's got to be a, a mindset and a commitment um, from day one throughout. So I think it's a, that's a, one big piece, you know, with a lot of moving pieces uh, as far as personnel as well. Um, and, you know, the influx of personnel made it at times difficult. Um, you factor into the lack of practice time, especially during that COVID stretch. Uh, we weren't allowed to practice beyond just walkthroughs and um, team meetings. That lasted probably three to four, four weeks, uh, which is a very difficult piece to uh, absorb when you start thinking about adding, you know, players in and out and not having the, uh, you know, mandatory reps to get guys up to speed. So certainly not, uh, um, you know, where, we, where it needs to be or where we want it to be. Um, but I think overall we'll, we'll be better for, it, you know, just having gone through it and guys coming back with a sense of corporate knowledge as far as what's expected um, and, and, and what, it, what it takes to really make a stand on that end of the floor. Thanks. We'll go to Ava. Last kind of trailing off of that, what do you feel like you were able to achieve on, on the defensive end in terms of installing anything you wanted to do just in kind of the last stretch of games that you had with some of the more core players who, you know, I know things are going to be in flux, but uh, what were you kind of able to get done in that short period of time defensively? Well, we were add, uh, able to add a few more layers, um, you know, with some zone, some box in one, um, you know, changing, you know, the dynamics on the fly, which at times was difficult early in the year. Um, once again, you know, a lot of new, new players, new staff, um, you know, that level of consistency, I think is, is where we wanted to be, but, you know, we, we found that later in the year and our, our guys were able to absorb a little bit more, uh, which I thought was terrific, you know, so it's, there, there's growth, even, even in a small window, um, you know, getting KP out there at the five at times, um, playing gaff, uh, you know, at the five KP at the four, the different lineups and pairings allowed us to see different things, but also adding layers to what we're trying to do. Um, I mean, I think, in, and seeing it in real time, and that now gives us an opportunity to clean it up a little bit over the summer. 
um, you know, tweak it a bit, but also, you no, know, we had that in our back pocket. I also wanted to ask what you specifically would like to see Rui either add to his game or kind of improve on uh, this offseason. Well, I think Rui took a big step, um, you know, in the past, just, as, you know, from my perspective, um, you know, he was a mid-range player and in, um, you know, played in the dunker, uh, played off the elbows, played in the post, uh, but to see him, you know, step out offensively, you know, uh, add the three-point dimension to his game, I think is a huge piece. Um, you know, on the flip side, you know, we put him in different situations. It's not just switching on to the ball, but now switching on to the ball and guarding the ball and pick and rolls, which is a huge piece for a guy who probably never done it. Um, but, you know, once again, that's one of those layers we're, we're alluding to where there's growth. Uh, so I think expanding both sides of the ball for him will be great. Um, he's picked up a lot quite quickly. And, it, you know, his ability to, um, you know, assimilate back into a group um, and to do it, you know, at a high rate. So I think it's a, it's a plus, but you know, defensively, I think it's, it's, it's more the, the nuanced things for him. He's got the ability to guard the ball, you know, uh, to stay in front. We've seen him, you know, uh, use his physicality, his size to guard bigs, um, but just more of the level of communication, identifying situations, um, you know, cleaner and quicker, being able to articulate coverage, um, you know, and process things I think is important. But those all require reps. So I think it's just going to take a bit of time. But I think he's better now than he was uh, when we first you know, started to implement him you know, 40 games ago. Thanks, Wes. We'll go to Chase. Hey, Wes. Um, what do you think about kind of the player development program you guys are developing from a macro view, just in terms of um, the system you're building for young players generally to develop and just how year one went in that regard? Well, I mean, it never goes completely as planned. Well, we've seen that. But, you know, I'm proud of how they've developed throughout this season. A lot of that's been because of opportunity. Um, I know Tommy alluded to it, and we've talked about it at times. You know, Corey's a prime example. Um, you're kind of searching for a way to find minutes for him, and he turns into, you know, your, your starter. Um, and those minutes are invaluable. You can't simulate those situations, those stretches, those type of environments um, in practice having to be a, a starter on the floor and play against marquee players uh, is a big piece. It, it, to me, it's going to accelerate your, your learning curve um, and hopefully, you know, your, your, your overall maturation. But uh, I think that the, uh, you know, being really efficient, you know, with these, with these guys as far as their individual skills work, but also how that translates to a team game. Um, I think it's always important to uh, build upon some of your weaknesses, but also you have to learn to augment your strengths. Um, and I think that's a, a big piece for this player development. And it's kind of the way we've attacked it. Uh, there's certainly a lot of layers to it. You know, it's not just the on the court, um, but also your, you know, the daily habits, you know, getting the nutrition right, building up their bodies, you know, the mindful dynamic. Um, all these other layers, I think, for young players are important. Um, and I think they had that this season uh, because we were trusting them to be a part of a heavy part of our rotation. Uh, so you want to piggyback on what they've experienced, but also, um, understand that this is a valuable summer. You know, it's a really a first full summer for both Rui and Denny. And obviously, Corey, you know, his first crack at it as well. So we've got to take full advantage of this opportunity and uh, move these guys forward. Defensively, uh, from a personnel perspective, um, what do you think you guys need and what, what do you like about what you have moving forward? Well, I, I think the biggest thing uh, with the size, um, you know, and our wing depth, We've talked about that at length, the versatility and flexibility that gives you. Um, I think some of it's schematic. Uh, there's a level of communication that comes with that. Uh, but once again, we'll be better for it, you know, having that, you know, have to go through it. I think there, you guys will come back with a sense of uh, understanding, a better sense of understanding. Um, but, you know, I think it's just more the mindset that uh, you, you can't take possessions off. We can't wait, you know, in the second or third quarter, second half to, you know, get our defense into a game. Um, it's just got to be a more of a consistent mindset that we, and approach. We got to do it from day one and and do it as hopefully close to 48 minutes as possible. We'll go to Neil. Hey, Coach. Just looking back, I guess, was there one specific aspect of moving over, you know, Tommy joked over 18 inches to being a head coach? Was there one specific aspect where you thought the learning curve was just, you know, a lot more than 
you could have initially expected? And maybe how do you hope to improve that going into year two? Uh, well, I just think overall uh, communication. Um, and it's not, you know, the, the team messaging. It's the sp- carving out the individual time, you know. And I try to touch players daily. Um, but I think even in, you know, you look at myself, I feel like times I talk too much. But uh, I don't think you can. There's no such thing as, you know, communicating too much, um, specifically, you know, on the individual level. Um, and I think that comes with also having the relationship, which, which we didn't have a ton of time to do prior to the season. So, you know, kind of building that on the fly and doing that through, um, you know, a lot of hiccups and adversity um, at times was, was difficult. But, you know, I thought we, we managed it well. Um, I think we have a terrific group of, of players. Um, and we've seen, especially the stretch as of late, um, it, it's translated onto the floor, the level of connectivity. So that's something we want to certainly build upon, um, you know, as we get Brad back and, you know, implement and augment our roster. Um, keep in mind that that's, that's a, a good thing to have. We'll, we'll hold on to that. And kind of once you've had now the, you know, exit conversation with Brad, I guess, what is your thought with him? What was kind of the mood and um, looking forward kind of future for looking? Well, yeah, there's a level of excitement, I think, for, uh, from, from both of us that, uh, you know, uh, things didn't go as, as we had planned. You know, a lot of that is uh, for un- unforeseen circumstances. But um, I think there's, there's a lot of excitement and hope about this, this summer um, and, and this group moving forward. The pieces that we've accumulated, um, you know, not only in the trade, but, you know, to see the growth from within. Uh, so we want to continue that, that trend continue to build from within, but also um, uh, get these guys out on the floor together and create that uh, synergy that we're, we've, we've stressed. Uh, so I think it's a big summer for all of us, but, um, you know, my takeaway from him is the excitement not only to get healthy, get back on the floor, but also, you know, get reacclimated with his teammates in a basketball sense. Thanks, Coach. Josh? Hey, good afternoon, Wes. Uh, how do you evaluate your team's point guard play this season? Well, I think, you know, in general, it's been by committee. Um, when at times, especially, you know, we were down bodies. We, we were asking Kyle and Denny to be facilitators and, and kind of orchestrate the offense. Um, Brad took on a, a larger role at times because guys were out. Um, but you know, I don't think you need a, you know, uh, a point guard to, to, to you know, run your offense and orchestrate everything. I think we've got a lot of playmakers uh, who can c- help facilitate that. Um, I, I, ideally, you have a guy who can, you know, keep us organized, who can, you know, defend his position, obviously make a shot when the ball finds him. But I don't think you have to, uh, need a guy that's tasked with having to, um, you know, orchestrate everything. I think, uh, I think that's, a, that's a lot to ask for. Um, in an ideal sense, but those guys don't exist. There's not, I don't think, five to ten names, uh, you know, left when you look at the true essence of a point guard. Um, I think they're, they're hybrid guards and they're, they're players, and I think you're trying to find the best talent and best complementary player for, for this group. To paraphrase Tommy, one of the qualities that he said the team will look for no matter who it, whether it retains the three people you have now or, or trades or signs or drafts somebody, is the ability to stop the dribble, uh, basically keep the ball in front. Uh, how rare a quality is that in the current league to find a point guard who does that above average or better? Well, I don't think it's just point guard. We, we talk about that dynamic. Um, uh, that's a big piece of your team defense. It's one thing to say, hey, this is schematic versus, uh, you know, when the coverage is blown uh, or, or the ball finds its way out of the coverage. Now you got to close out and you got to guard. Um, so it's not unique to just point guards. Uh, I think that's a, a big thing for not, not only us, but for teams around the league. Offensive players are too, too skilled. You know, the rules are kind of, uh, you know, slanted in that direction, the, the freedom of movement. So it's very difficult to guard uh, dynamic offensive players. Uh, so to have anyone, you know, specifically point guard, but anyone to be able to stay in front of their matchup, uh, guard their yard, I think it's a big, a big piece. Um, and some of that is understanding personnel. Um, some of that's understanding, you know, overall tendencies, but being in the right spot at the right time. Um, so 
there are a lot of layers to, you know, beyond just a guy who's got quickness or agility, uh, the physicality to, to do it. There, there's, there's also the, the mental piece. Thank you. With Christos. Uh, hello, coach. Hope you're doing well. Uh, what was, speaking about the season that came to an end some days before, what was the biggest, the biggest challenge for you? What was the best moment and the worst moment for you? Um, I think that, you know, one of the best moments, um, you know, the way we started the season was great. Um, you know, winning in Toronto, that, that'll stick with me for a long time. Because uh, I thought, you know, guys are really dialed in. There was an excitement about the start of the season. Um, and obviously we performed at a high level. Uh, so that was, uh, you know, to get your first win on the road, of course, that's an exciting moment. Um, I, I wouldn't categorize, I can't say one specific moment that was tough. I think, you know, as you, as you reflect back on, on the year, um, there were a lot of little moments that were, were, were difficult. You know, I think that what I'm most proud of is how we responded, uh, our ability to uh, adjust, absorb some situations, some tough circumstances, but you know, you rally together um, and, and pull through it. Um, and, and that doesn't always translate into wins. Some of these are, you know, there's no quantitative measure, um, you know, for a team to have to go through some of these things. And, but the fact that we were able to absorb it, uh, and I think we uh, uh, were in a better place, come out on the other side, a better place. And also speaking about the next season, how, how satisfied you are about the foundation that you have in this team, about the core that you have, for the, for the next season. How, how big, and do you feel that this core is a playoff caliber core from your perspective? Uh, well, I think I'm, I'm very excited about it. Uh, honestly, it's, uh, um, our young guys got, got better. They had the opportunity to perform um, and get those valuable minutes under their belt. So it, it, as part of our rotation this year, um, they've logged a lot of live minutes. So I think that's a big piece. Um, obviously the health factors, something we can't necessarily control, but uh, if we come back healthy, you know, we've seen our, the progression of our young players. Um, I think we're, we're setting ourselves up for a pretty bright future. Um, I think there, there is a so solid base, a foundation that we can continue to, to improve and tweak, continue to grow upon. Uh, but um, overall, I'm very pleased with where we are um, as a roster, where we are collectively, uh, you know, as a team. So I think there's a lot of um, excitement about where, where we can move this thing forward. Thank you very much, Coach. You're on. Um, hello, Coach. Uh, can you expand a little bit about Denny's uh, abilities uh, with the ball, uh, not just in transition, but also in set offense, uh, pick and rolls? Well, yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, an opportunity. Um, we well, had plenty of opportunity to do that this year. Um, so we looked at it this summer, and that was something we, you know, we came in uh, wanting to see. Was he capable of not only, you know, playing pick and roll, pushing in transition, making the right reads um, at times, you know, orchestrating the offense. Um, but, you know, it, it's well documented, you know, young player, usage rate goes up. Um, at times, the turnovers, mistakes will happen. Uh, so I think it's just uh, an area of improvement for him. And, and it's a sign of growth. Any, anytime you're tasked with doing a little bit more, you have to kind of learn on the fly and, and get, work your way through some of the hiccups. Um, but I think he overall, you know, handled it well. Um, it, it's, it's a testament to him and his efficiency when teams start to game plan to try and take him out of pick and roll, take him off his right hand. Um, that, that, that's a sign of respect. So we started to see that late in the season. So it's, it does mean that, that his impact is noticeable. Uh, but yeah, he's got to grow, want, you know, continue to improve his finishing, uh, work with his left hand, his offhand. Uh, he's shooting the ball with more confidence. So continue that trend as well. And, and obviously, you know, not only him, but we all have to get back to, you know, working at defending at a high level. Thank you. Little Wayne. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Uh, with now with your first full season under your belt, what were some of the things you learned about yourself this season? Uh, I think I had more patience than I thought. Um, and, it, and it's just one of those things where um, it's not, it's a difference between being patient with people and patient with circumstance. Um, and I think it's just that mindset of you can con only control with, with uh, the things you can control. Can't worry about the other stuff. Um, and you, once you put that stuff aside, it really helps channel your energy in the right direction. Um, and I think that for the most part, I was able to do that. And lastly, Coach, I asked Tommy, but I'll ask you, when you look at your roster now and for the future, 
what are you hoping your identity uh, can become as, as you lead the Wizards? Well, I mean, it goes back to the d- defensive, uh, you know, point where that, that's part of our core identity. And um, obviously we, we didn't have that um, to the extent we wanted. So we certainly have to, um, you know, take a hard look at what we're doing, uh, how we're doing it, and get better in that area. Uh, but I do like where we are offensively, the, the ability to share the ball. Um, guys have bought into that, and I think they enjoy playing that way. Um, so, um, you know, continue that trend where guys are moving, moving the ball, moving bodies. Um, everyone feels they're a part of it. But we do have to get back to defending at a high level if we uh, really want to go where we think we can be. Uh, we'll go to Zach. Hey, um, Coach, you touched on defense as being an area of improvement you want to see from Rui, but uh, what was your message to him at his exit interview? Um, well, some of that I'll keep to, you know, between myself and Rui. Um, I was just proud of the way he responded, you know, having missed camp, missed, you know, a, a large chunk of the season you know, to have been thrust into a situation. Um, and there were some minute limitations. There were some, you know, restrictions at first, but being able to get up to speed, you know, as best as possible, um, given the circumstance, but, you know, then turning into a, a starter, you know, w- which he was last season and performing at a high level. So um, to see him grow and, and expand his game is a big piece of that, but also, um, you know, his ability to kind of absorb things on the fly, um, you know, get to know a, a different group of, of players and coaches without having that, you know, time in September or, or preseason. Um, I, I was really proud of how he responded. Thank you. Chase, you have another question? Are you good? Uh, yes, I do. Um, Cassius Winston and Isaiah Todd were, uh, you know, of course, two recent second round picks by the team. How would you rate the season that they've had, where they are in their development, and what you like, what you would like to see from them this offseason? Well, I, I want to answer that last part first. Uh, it, it's a big offseason for those two. Um, big offseason for all our, our young guys. Um, uh, but, you know, the, the, you're going to have a season of ebbs and flows. Um, you know, consistency is, is the thing we're, we're searching for. Um, and, and that's one thing that young players at times have difficulty with. Um, I thought Cash had some really good moments. In, you know, not a ton of sample size with the Wizards, but, uh, you know, even, even with the go-go, both he and Isaiah had you know, big games and great opportunities okay. to learn and grow. Uh, but I think, you know, the, the more we can put time on the floor, um, and that's a message with not only our young players, but all our players is – you know, of course, you want guys to get away and, and uh, regroup, uh, you know, get their bodies right. But, you know, it, it's important to stay connected to us because I think, you know, our staff, our coaches, our player development department, uh, we not only know their individual game, but how it translates to the team game better than anyone else. So I think we have to take full advantage of these opportunities over the next few months um, to really, you know, move them forward and, and get more out of them. Um, but I think it's, it was a good, good start for those two. And, I'd like to see um, how it you know, translates into the summer. And we talked so much this year about uh, paint defense. Um, what do you think was the problem there with paint defense specifically? Well, I don't think we were, um, you know, grossly negligent in that area. Um, part of it is, you know, at the point of attack, can, can you guard, your, guard, guard the ball? I think another big piece of that was, um, you know, pick and roll. Um, and, you know, th- these are some schematic things we have to take a look at. But, you know, the bottom line is, can you close out and guard one-on-one? You can be in shrink coverage spots at the right time, you know. And th- these are some things that um, we have to con- continue to improve upon. But uh, overall, um, it's, it wasn't just one specific thing defensively. Uh, you can point at our transition defense. We were number one in fast break points allowed. Now that's, you know, whatever metric you use, our transition defense overall wasn't great. Um, you know, some of that's turnovers, but um, there, there are a lot of areas that you can improve upon. Um, and the pain is, is obviously a, a big piece of that. All right, Coach, that is it. Thank you so much for your time. All right, appreciate everybody. I, I, I really do uh, want to take the opportunity to thank you guys for, you know, everything you bring every day. And I know it's, I don't actually get to see the faces, but uh, to, to hear your voice, um, you know, I, I can certainly appreciate after a long season, uh, your, own, your patience with me and uh, some of my answers probably. But um, I want to say thank you for all your support and everything you guys do.